This time of year, I photograph a lot of basketball. I live in Ohio. I shoot girls basketball, boys basketball. And I've, uh, this is a short video to help folks give you 10 pointers to hopefully help you shoot better basketball pictures. First thing I'll do is I'll go over, show you my bullet points, and then show you a few digital files to kind of uh, support those points. If you have any comments, uh, just go ahead and leave them below. So number one, I use a long lens. I use a 70 to 200. That's pretty much all the lens I use to shoot basketball. That allows me to get as close if I want to shoot close, or it also allows me to go to the end of the, uh, to shoot to the at the end of the court. You need a long lens to get you close. Number two is I you want to use a fast enough shutter speed to stop the action. Typically, I hang out in the 800th of a second to a thousandth of a second. Sometimes I go to uh, 1250 to shoot boys if there's a lot of light. You also want to keep in mind that uh, to, to, you don't want camera shake. And kind of the golden rule is so that you don't have camera shake. Whatever lens you l use, whatever the longest focal length, you want to double that in shutter speed. So if I'm using a 200 millimeter lens, I want to have at least five hundredths of a second so that I don't have a uh, camera shake. My favorite angle is number, th number three is I like to shoot from a high angle, whether it's in a balcony or up in the stands. That does a couple things for you. Um, that gives you a really clean background and it gives you more light because the subjects are looking up towards the basket when they're shooting. And when they look up towards the light source, that gives you more light. Number four, you want to vary your approach. You never want to shoot a game from one spot. Your pictures will just look the same over and over, and uh, you, you want to vary your spots. Number five kind of goes with number three. I like a clean background. But when I'm under the basket, which is kind of rare, I, uh, I try to avoid it when the players have the uh, uh, spectators behind them. It just makes it a... a, a messy picture it makes it a busy picture now when I am under the basket I will kind of shoot straight up the floor where the, the the background is is very clean number six I like to use a f-stop that that doesn't give me a whole lot of depth of field I usually hang out in a 4.0 to 5.6 area I never shoot a basketball like f8 or f11 or f16 to 22 I just don't do it I don't want all that stuff in focus Number seven, you got to know the capabilities of your camera. What's a usable ISO for your camera? How high can you go? I shoot a, a, with a Canon R3, and I can uh, jack my ISO to 5,000, and it gives me a nice, uh, fairly clean image. Uh, the higher the, you, you go with your ISO, it gives you uh, the sensitivity of the sensor uh, is higher, um, you can have faster shutter speeds, but it also brings in a uh, grain, and it makes your uh, your picture uh, on the muddy side. Number seven, uh, some shots will always be there. An example is an opening tip-off, uh, players shooting foul shots, coaches talking to players during a timeout, players jockeying for a rebound position, uh, especially when they're on the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, because if they miss that first one, uh, there's a rebound there to get. Uh, you also want to show up early to take portraits of the players as they're warming up. Those can be some really nice pictures. Number nine, the more you know the game, the better you will be prepared to take some really nice action shots. And number ten, and probably the most important, is let the peak action happen inside the camera. Uh, that's so important if you do want to capture peak action. You want to use your motor drive and the high frame rate to follow the action and just as it happens. Some people call this spray and pray uh, like it's a bad thing. But you have to do that if you want to capture peak action. So let's look at a few of the uh, files. And here we go. Here's an example of the pictures that's always there, the opening tip-off, uh, the players getting ready to, uh, you know, pump each other up just before, before the game.
Another tip off. This is at Fenwick High School in Middletown, Ohio. And here's an example of, of, of shooting up high. First off, let me show you my favorite positions. So right here, favorite position, fave, is shooting from a balcony. If I can't shoot from a balcony, I will shoot in these positions here. Number one, and all of them, one, two, three, four, and three, they're all about five to seven rows up. I stand on those right there, stand on the bleachers, and I shoot towards the basket, kind of down, cleans it up really nice, compresses the scene really nice. Um, basically all these, almost all these are shot from there. You can tell, but I'm higher than the basket because you can see the under uh, part of that grin. That means I'm a little bit higher than that basket. People are in the background, but I'm shooting at 3.2 f-stop, which blurs out the people in the back. My ISO is 5,000. Here, I'm sh my shutter speed is 1,000. Same there, shooting down, shooting down. Shooting down, cleans it up really nice. Nothing is distracting in that in that picture. Same, same. More light is on the on the young man there because he's looking up. That picture looks a little nicer because there's not people in the crowd. Guy driving the basket, rebound. Good example here of you just lay on a motor drive as she drives to the basket. Let the action happen inside the frame. Shooting up high, same thing here. Laying on a motor drive, the girl hacks her. You would never get that without laying on a motor drive. Just won't happen. When I do shoot from underneath the basket, I kind of stay away from when I do when I am on the floor, I usually stay in the F. You see the F right there, right there, right there, and right there. If you hang out here. The referees kind of park right there when they float underneath the basket. There's one referee almost always under the basket, and they hang out right there, and you get a lot of referee butt. That's so frustrating. And if you're here and here, you can also get nice pictures of the coaches as they're uh, hopefully being animated, and you can get some players' reaction there too. It's on a rare occasion that, that I do get right here. When I do get right here under the basket, I will shoot this way, the length of the floor, so that what is behind you is this way down here. But you have, you know, your 200 millimeter lens on, and it and it that blows out out of focus whatever is there. Here's a good example of, you know, there that picture is always there. People boxing each other out. That was shot from up high. That's from high. That's high. That picture's always there, shooting a foul shot. Uh, here's a picture of a little bit underneath the basket, but I'm shooting the length of the floor, pretty much. And so what is behind them is blown out out of focus. A picture, here's a picture of a very busy picture and this is what I try to stay away from. When I look at this picture, my eye goes straight to this guy in the red hat. Then it goes to the people in the white sweatshirts. Uh, the last thing my eye goes to are these guys playing basketball. So I hope this helps. I appreciate you watching. If you have any comments or if you have any questions, just leave them below. I believe my next video might be how to shoot some uh, better pickleball pictures. If anybody out there likes to take pictures of pickleball, uh, picture down the road is I will shoot um, how to take better football pictures, how to take better baseball pictures. So I appreciate you watching. Oh, yeah. Uh, typically, I forgot to touch on this. Typically, I use, my, I use a Canon R3 uh, mirrorless. I normally shoot on mechanical shutter because at a at a at a game when I shoot mechanical shutter I'll photograph anywhere to take as anywhere from 700 to 900 pictures. If I shoot it on electronic shutter, I'll take probably 2,000 to 4,000 pictures. 
So it kind of depends how important the game is, uh, how, how many pictures I take. And normally I deliver 25 to 35 pictures to the customer. And it's easier to look through 700 pictures than it is to, you know, two or 3,000. Now when you shoot two to 3,000, you get a lot more better action, but it just takes a whole lot of more time. And uh, so anyway, I appreciate you watching. Thanks.